Hello everyone, welcome to this Newton Law question. Now I quickly want to let you know that this question is actually quite long. I couldn't fit everything on the screen. So if you want to pause the video now and try some of the question, let me just quickly show you what the next part looks like. So you can also, so you can just um, pause, fast forward, rewind, I don't know, whatever you need to do. But so there's the first part. And then that will be the second part of the question. Okay, so I don't know how you want to do it, but you might want to just pause and try it out. So I've showed you the first part and the second part. So I'm just going to be focusing on the first part now. So the first question says, state Newton's second law. Right now, there are different definitions of Newton's second law. What? Kevin, my teacher said there's only one. Guys, all teachers say that. Why? Because they've just been using the same textbook for many, many years. However, I've taught many different learners, and so each textbook has a slightly different variation. Um, so when you get to grade 12 in your final exams, they're not looking for one exact definition. They're looking for particular words. Okay, so I'm going to show you the definition that I see most often, but I would advise that you use the one your teacher's given you. There is the definition. I've highlighted it in yellow. So pretty much it's all based upon this formula over here. Well, first of all, F net equals MA. And if you have to get A alone, it would have F net over M. And so it says that a net force on an object will cause the object to accelerate. The acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. So you can see that it's directly proportional to the net force and inversely. So when this one's at the bottom, then that's called inversely proportional to the mass. Question 2.2. Assuming that there is no friction acting on the wheels and the surface. Oh, that's actually quite interesting. So there's no friction at all. So we must remember that. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration, and then they also want us to calculate the tension. Now, if you've watched any of my videos where we've got two objects like this connected by a rope, you would know that I've got a three-step system that we use to solve these types of questions. And that always goes like this. Step one, we will draw a free body diagram of or on, or let's say for each object, for each object. Step two, we will do F net equals to MA for each object. And then step three, we will solve. And it's usually going to be some type of simultaneous equation. So let's do that now. So when we, so what I like to do is I just like to divide my page in half. And then I'll just take one object at a time. So maybe over here, I'll do the five kilogram object. And then on this side, I'll do the two kilogram object. Now, okay, so we're just going to do a free body diagram. So that's going to be a little dot and a little dot. Now you need to have an overall direction. So for example, you might say that this one is going this way, but if that one is going that way, then this block must be going down. I won't lie. If I had to tell you how many times I've seen students who get that part incorrect, it would be a lot of people. So you've got to be careful that you're not making that mistake because it causes your answers to be completely wrong. So what some students do is they'll say, okay, this one's going this way and this one's going that way. Guys, how could that even happen? They are connected with a rope. So they have to follow the same pathway. All right. So if you pretending that this one's going this way, then this block must go downwards. That is so important. You'll see how it makes a very big difference now. Right, so let's go draw a free body diagram. So on the five kilogram object, there's definitely a tension force. There's gravity. There's a normal force. And that's actually it. Normally there would be friction acting to the left, but in this case, they told us there is no friction. Now for the two kilogram object, here's another thing students get incorrect. They often say that there's a normal force. There is no normal force on that object because it's not touching 
the surface. It's not resting on any table or anything like that. So the only forces acting on it will be gravity, trying to pull it down, and then tension in the rope, which is trying to slow it down. And those are the different forces. So we've done step one. Step two, we're gonna use F net equals MA for each one. So for this object, I'm gonna say F net equals MA, and I'm gonna say that to the right is positive. And so the only forces acting in the horizontal direction is FT. So I can just say FT is equal to M, which is five, and A, I don't know. Then I go to the other object. Now I'm choosing downwards as positive. Why? Because the system is moving like that. Now here's where students get this wrong. They say something like, okay, F net equals MA, and then they don't know which one of these is positive. I see this mistake quite a lot. If we're saying down is positive, then it means FG is positive, so we say FG, and then FT is pointing up, so that's negative. Be careful. Many, many learners, they'll say FT minus FG, and you gotta be careful, that's not correct, it'll give you the completely wrong answer. And so that's gonna be equal to 2A, and we can actually work out the gravity. That's just two times 9.8, so we can say two times 9.8, because FG is always equal to MG, and then minus FT, and that's equal to 2A. Step two has been completed. Now step three is just to solve, and it's normally simultaneous. And that's exactly what's gonna happen here. We've got this equation and this equation, and both of them have um, FT and A as an unknown, so we have two unknowns. So there are different ways that learners like to solve simultaneous equations. Some learners like to make the two equations equal to each other, whereas some learners like to just use substitution. I think the most popular one that I've seen is the making them equal to each other. And so I'm gonna go with that today. So this one already has FT by itself. So what I do now is I take this equation and I'm also gonna get FT by itself. So I'm gonna take FT to the right, and then on the left, I'm gonna have 19.6 minus 2A, and then I'm gonna make these two equations equal to each other. You see, because they're both equal to FT. So I can then say that 19.6 minus 2A is the same as 5A. I can then solve for A, and we should get 2.8 meters per second. And you don't have to give a direction, because you can't. Because the one object's going right and the other object's going down, so you can't say right and down, you just give the value like that. So we've done question 2.2.1 now, so we got the acceleration. Now we just need to get the tension in the string. So if we scroll back down to where we did our calculations, this is very easy now. We've calculated the acceleration. So to find the tension, you can just plug it into either there, or if you would like, you can even plug it into there. Doesn't really matter. You will get the exact same answer. For To, or to make it easier, I'm just gonna plug it into there. And so FT would be equal to five multiplied by this 2.8 value that we've just calculated. And that gives us 14 Newtons. We have now completed this question and this question. So now we can go into the second half, which is this part over here. So now they tell us that experimental results, however, showed that the actual acceleration of the trolley was two meters per second. Okay, so we calculated 2.8, but when they did it using an experiment, they got two. So don't worry about 2.4. That's not, that picture's not what we're looking at now. So they, they're telling us that when they did the experiment with this question, which we did earlier, they said that the acceleration was actually two meters per second. But what did we get? We got 2.8. So now, so, so we got an acceleration of 2.8, but they're getting an acceleration of two. So it's accelerating a little bit slower. And that would be if there was a little bit of friction at the wheels, and so that's why it's going a little bit slower now. So now they're saying, find out what that friction force would be. 
So you can restart the question right from the beginning if you want, where you do your free body diagrams and you do your F net equals MA on each object and then you link them together. And normally when you do that, what would your unknowns be? Think about that. What would your unknowns normally be? Normally it would be tension force and acceleration. Now they've given us the acceleration this time. And so we no longer have a simultaneous um, question anymore. And some of you might be tempted to use the tension force that we calculated in the previous question, but that is not correct because there is now a new type, there's friction now. And so the tension force and everything actually changes. So we would technically have to restart. So let's restart, but I'll show you that it's going to go a lot faster because they've given us acceleration. So once again, we do a free body diagram. So on the five kilogram object, it's still got the tension force. Now it has friction, it has a normal force, and it has gravity. If we do a free body diagram on the two kilogram, that one does not change at all. It's got gravity and it's got FT. Step two, we use F net equals MA on each object. So we say F net equals to MA. Now remember, we're still gonna pretend we're going to the right. Now the forces in the horizontal direction would be those two. So the FT is going to the right, but the friction force is going to the left. And then the mass is five and that's A. Oh no, they've given us acceleration, haha. -ha. So we have acceleration as two. Now here's where it gets pretty awesome. We're gonna go F net equals MA for this one. We're gonna say down as positive. And we're gonna go FG. Let me just write this out first and then I'll fill in the values for you guys. FG minus FT equals to MA. So if we fill in FG, it's two times 9.8 minus FT. Now check here. We know that the mass of that object is two, but we also know the acceleration. So look what happens. We can get FT alone. We can solve FT in this equation actually. And then we take that answer and we plug it in there and then we get the friction force. You see, because they've given us the acceleration, it makes it a lot better. So let's go solve for FT over here. So if we get FT alone, we're gonna get 19.6 minus four. And so the tension force will be 15.6 Newtons. Then we can take that tension force and use it over here. And so this one would say 15.6 minus the friction force equals to five times two. And so if I bring the friction over to the right, and then I take the five times two, which is 10 over to the left, then I'd find out that the friction force is 5.6 Newtons. And so we have now finished this question 2.3, and so that is complete. And so here is our last one, question 2.4. The trolley is modified to eliminate the effects of friction. Okay, so when they say that, they're just meaning that they're gonna put it on an angle so that there will be no friction. And then it says calculate the value of the angle so that the trolley remains at rest. Okay, so some interesting things here. We are not moving anymore. And so this means the acceleration is zero. That is very important that we understand that. And also there is no friction, okay? So there's no friction. So now some of you are probably like, hmm, so how are we gonna solve this one? Guess what, guys? Whenever we have two objects connected with a rope, we can use the three-step scenario. Really, Kevin? That's awesome. I know, guys. It's incredible. So let's go do our three steps. So step one, once again, draw your free body diagrams. Step two, we're going to use F net equals to MA. Step three, solve. And so let's divide our page in half. Now let's go do our free body diagram on the five kilogram. And then we'll also do it on the two kilogram. Now for the five kilogram, we know that there's a tension force going up. There will be a normal force going like that. Now listen up carefully guys. Some of you, you like to put gravity when we're on a slope, you like to make it go like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But then some of you rather prefer to do the following. 
Some of you would rather go like this. You would say FT, and then you would say normal force. But then what you like to do is you break the gravity up into gravity perpendicular, gravity parallel. Both of those options are correct. Just don't use both of them at the same time. That's not correct. I personally love to use this one over here. And so this is the one that I'm going to go forward with for the rest of this question. It just makes the, it makes the F net equals to MA part so much easier to understand. Now we're going to do a free body diagram on the two kilogram, same as it was earlier. There's gravity and there's tension. Step one is complete. Step two, we use F net equals to MA. Now we don't, there's no movement for this question because the objects are not moving. So some of you might be thinking, now Kevin, how do I know what direction to choose? It doesn't really matter. You can choose any direction. So you might, you might go, you might say that that's the direction that you are going to choose as positive. Or you might say that these are the directions you're going to choose as positive. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it the way it was earlier. I'm going to pretend that these are the positive directions. So that means that for the five kilogram, it's going up the slope. Well, it's, we're not saying it's moving up the slope, but that's just the positive direction we're going to choose. And then this object is going down. Okay. A lot of students, as I said earlier, they might say that this one's going like this and this one's going like this, and then you're just going to get a problem in your answers. Okay. So now we can say F net equals to MA and we're going to say that this one is positive. So let's look at all the forces. Now this is why I like to do my free body diagrams like this because I can instantly see what the different forces are. And so there's tension going in the positive direction minus gravity parallel because that's going in the negative direction and that would be equal to MA. Now I can go full in as much as I can so I don't know what the tension force is. Gravity parallel has a special formula and that's mg sin theta. So that's going to be mass of 5 um, times 9.8 times sin of theta, but we don't know what theta is. And then the mass is 5 and acceleration is 0 because it's at rest. And there we go. So now I can say ft minus 49 sin theta equals to 0. Now I go do it on the other object. And so remember, you must not now say, you mustn't say FT minus FG. That's going to cause big problems. Well, technically in this question, it wouldn't cause any issues, but that's just because of luck, uh, because there's no acceleration. But in a normal question, that's going to cause big problems. So if we choose, so we're going to say downwards is positive. And so we can say FG minus FT is equal to MA. And FG is 2 times 9.8. FT, we don't know. Because remember, FT is now changed because they've changed the, the question. They've changed the angles and everything. And then the mass is 2, but the acceleration is 0. And so what we can find out is that 19.6 minus FT is 0. So this means I can calculate FT by taking it to the other side. And there we have it, FT is 19.6 um, newtons. We can just say newtons over here. There we go. Now I can use that over there. How awesome and easy is this, guys? So we can then say 19.6 minus 49 sin theta equals zero. I'm then gonna take that over to the other side, like that, divide by 49, And then to get theta alone, I need to say that it's going to be shift sin, or some of you like to say arc sin of that over there. And so the angle we get will be 23,58 degrees. And there we have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you can understand the three-step process works almost every single time. It's pretty awesome. See you guys in the next one.